Hello everyone. Tonight we're embarking on a different journey. We are in the heart of Oxford, a city known for its universities and its history. As the sun sets, a different side of Oxford comes to life. Tonight we are exploring Oxford's haunted street. <laughs> Love the background. <laughs> I actually saw something dark go in front of the lamp. I don't know if it's recorded, eh? It was really weird. Yeah. Oxford has been around for over 1,000 years and it has seen its share of history. And where there's history, there are often ghosts. Tonight, we're going to visit one of the most haunted spots in the city. Let's get started, the ghostly treasure hunt. Oxford and its university is, as many people know, acknowledged as the oldest still established university in the world, dating back to some time in the 11th century. The university has, not surprisingly, had a part to play, and sometimes a rather large part, in major historical events, and it has been involved in its fair share of bloody and violent events like riots, trials and executions, for which the remnants and repercussions still haunt the university today. Our journey begins here at St Michael at the North Gate, which is, used to be the old jail of Oxford. And this is probably the oldest building in the city, as it dates back to the 11th century. People are waiting for, will be waiting either for the trial or for execution just up here in the tower. At the time, uh, executions were by hanging, and if the crimes were serious, they'd be hanged, drawn, and quartered, and the body parts displayed literally just outside here, uh, outside the gates of the city. That was the fate of two Catholic priests that were in prison here and killed who were professing their faith as how where Catholicism was illegal. And the same thing happened to martyrs of the city. And we are going to find out what happened to them on the turn up stop. There should be a cross halfway somewhere. See if you can find it. I was trying to go to you. a nice field in case you see something that we don't. It's like a little treasure hunt. It is. It's a historical ghostly treasure hunt. A gold sign on an ornate wooden door reads the Master Lodgings Balliol College. That's not it. Here. So this is the master lodgings. Okay. Look into the middle of the road and you see a crossing laid into the tarmac. Oh, I found it. <laughs> That's amazing. So this is the spot where three Protestant priests were burnt to the stake for professing their faith during the time of Bloody Mary. And it is said that at a certain time of the year, a supernatural glow or a flame coming from the cross can be seen on the same spot where the three priests were killed. So stop number three is Trinity College gates. Unfortunately, you can only see the gates because the, these people on these bicycles, they're quite scared. so we can have a peek. Let's have a peek. Unfortunately, we cannot see much of Trinity College. But this is where the ghosts of the two twins can be found. 
both former students at a college. Apparitions were two very similar looking men, aged about 60, and clothed in clerical colours. Only the top halves of the ghosts' bodies were visible. These two ghostly twins had apparently seen around Kettle Hall by other students on a number of occasions dating back 20 years. Curiously though, Christopher Chavez had died in World War I, age 30, and Noel was still alive and age 64 at the time. That's very weird. Gotta be careful because obviously this cousin bicycle. So next stop is where the two wooden doors are. It's a nice way of seeing Oxford, really. In the evenings, when it's dark, very moody. So we're here at the corner between Ship Street and Tull Street. The garden on the other side of the gate is said to be the scene of a very unusual haunting. The, in 1947, the wife of the then principal of Jesus College was woken up one night uh, by the sound of the dog barking and looking out the window she saw a strangely dressed man digging holes in the garden and when she woke her husband up and they looked out the window together he was digging a third hole. Her husband didn't want to challenge the guy, so he decided to um, deal with it in the morning. But when they woke up in the morning, there were no holes in the ground. The ghost is thought to be one of William Villiers, who returned to Oxford in 1643 after being wounded. And he found his wife in a very compromising position with a lover. So he challenged the lover to a jewel and unfortunately lost his life. It is said that his body was buried in what it is now the principal's garden. Was the ghost of Villiers looking for his body? That should be Lincoln College Library. Not a church. Lincoln College Library. So this is basically was a church built on top of another church and now it's a library. The building was sold to Lincoln College in 1971 and he underwent uh, a lot of renovation and of course during the renovation because this was a site of burial for centuries of course, a couple of bodies or two were found. However, the people in charge of this were not prepared for the scale of what they found. Hundreds of bodies dated back to the 9th century, packed in the below All Saints Church. There are reports of sextons walking around the churchyard, thrusting a metal spike into the ground in their attempt to find the free spot in between the bodies. The Old Bank Hotel was a one-time stately townhouse. The ghost that inhabits the building is the one of Prudence Burcoat, who apparently died of a broken heart, and the ghost of Prudence is said to haunt the rooms and corridors of the building. So we're now continuing down the high street and we are going to look for a church-like building which is St. Magdalene's Chapel. So that, that is the chapel-like building, Magdalene College. It's the most haunted college in Oxford with 16 ghosts. The most famous is Oscar Wilde. 
This is Magdalen College and this is where Oscar Wilde is allegedly haunting the building. This is where he studied the classics, but he's not the most famous ghost in the building. The most famous ghost in the building is another priest that was hanged, drawn and quartered and his head put on a spike. The family came to collect the body, however the head was never found. So apparently he is the headless ghost that can be seen out of the window sometimes looking, looking out. But how can that happen without a head? It's quite curious, isn't it? I'm gonna go like this. I know that I'm lying. Can you see a headless ghost anywhere? Out of the windows? I'm gonna have a look. Mm. Curious though. I don't know. I felt I actually feel here like someone is looking at me. But I don't know where. Maybe it's the power of suggestion. Okay. So we're gonna turn left now into Merton Street. Oh, look at this place. And I guess this is Merton College. Merton College had many notable alumni, including T.S. Eliot and Liz Truss. The most celebrated former member is J.R.R. Tolkien which we all know he's the author of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien was a professor here at Merton College from 1945 until his retirement. And when his wife died, he returned to Merton to live in a flat provided by the college. And he can be seen wandering around the halls in his tweed jacket, waistcoat and a pipe. And the gusts of pipe smokes can be smelled in the college corridor as if it was right there. It is, isn't it? Right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this ghostly tour of Oxford. If you did, give us the thumb up and let us know in the comments below and I shall see you in the next video. <laughs> it's kind of spooky. I'm going to record some, some pretty dumb stuff now. It's kind of spooky.